the 1998 Titan football season is but a memory. The once filled bleachers of cheering fans are now empty. The scoreboard is blank and the sounds that once echoed the Titan team on to victory are silent. The only thing that does remain are the vivid and lasting memories of one of the best teams in Scheller's 28 year history. This team took Titan football to the championship level. Right off the bat, um, we felt that we could win the Quad North Conference and we could be successful in the playoffs, mainly because we returned a lot of players, a lot of skilled guys, good quarterback, good backs, good receivers, and we really felt that uh, that was an achievable goal. Well, I think our goal was first to get to the playoffs, then second to win the Quad North Championship. To accomplish our goals, I think we just worked hard and went out every day and worked hard at practice to accomplish them goals. Uh, we, we felt that the, this, this goal was attainable, and uh, that's why I think it was so special that the kids uh, bought into what it was that we were uh, presenting as a challenge to them, and uh, with, the, with the great leadership that we had by our captains and, and a very, uh, very strong senior group, uh, it really w was, a, was a, a very enjoyable season. Uh, when you set the goal early on, the kids take, uh, take the challenge, uh, uh, attack in a very business-like manner, and uh, achieve the goal. So it was a very, very special season. The 98 campaign began with two non-conference games on the road against Kiskey and Baldwin. Against the Cavaliers, the Titans' high-powered offense sputtered for three quarters. A great defensive play by J.T. Hood at the end of the first quarter would set up Scheller's only score in the first half as Chris Siegel hit tight end Dan Troutman for a 15-yard touchdown to tie the game. For the rest of the half and into the third quarter, an aggressive Titan defense kept the Cavaliers off the scoreboard. With the score still tied in the fourth quarter, Scheller started to drive from its own 40-yard line. So the Titans will line it up, fourth down and three. Another big fourth down play for the Titans. They are one for two on fourth down conversions tonight. Velakovic in motion, two tight ends. Play fake, they give the ball to Trotman, and Trotman's got a first down and end some. Crosses the 25 to the 22 yard line. Siegel, quick snap, rolling left. Siegel looks, finds Velakovic. Velakovic may have the corner. He's into the end zone for the Shaler touchdown. Randy Velakovic, 21 yards from Chris Siegel. And with 5.30 remaining here in the fourth quarter, the Titans have taken the lead. Great job by Siegel there to get where no one else could get it but Velakovic. With five minutes remaining in the game, a great defensive play by Pat Pizzotta forced Kiskey to punt from deep in their own territory. A bobbled snap by the Cavalier punter would give Scheller excellent field position at the Kiskey 10-yard line. On the next play, sophomore Brandon Lamar pulls his way into the end zone, giving Scheller a 21-7 victory. Week two, the Titans faced the 1-0 Baldwin Highlanders. The Titan offense came out firing on their first possession. But it was the defense that would give Scheller great field position at Baldwin's 47-yard line, setting up the Titans' first score as Siegel hit Velakovic for a 21-yard touchdown. On Baldwin's next possession, a pursuing Titan secondary would stop the Highlanders. Joyce gonna roll out left. Throws, fires, and is intercepted by Farrington. Tom Farrington, the 20, and Farrington is out of bounds. He is marked out of bounds at the 16-yard line. The Titan defense continued to pressure an elusive Baldwin offense with a relentless attack throughout the first half. Chris Siegel, who would pass for 176 yards against the Highlanders, continued his assault in the second quarter. Siegel. To his right, you're going to set up the screen. Here's Farrington. Farrington has a nice couple of nice blocks ahead of him. Farrington may break loose. 10, 5, touchdown, Shaler Titans. Baldwin cut the Titans' lead to seven early in the third quarter. But a potent Shaler offense that would rack up over 377 total offensive yards 
mounted a nine-play, 69-yard scoring drive that was capped off by Lamar's 11-yard run into the end zone, giving Scheller a 21-7 lead. The Highlanders attempted to make the game interesting in the second half, but hard-hitting style defensive play by the Titans kept Baldwin off the scoreboard. Sophomore Brandon Lamar finished the Titans scoring with TD runs of five and 38 yards to give Scheller a commanding 21-point victory over Baldwin. Scheller's convincing victory over Baldwin moved them up to the number two spot in the Whippeal coaches poll as they opened up at home against a new Quad A North opponent, Central Catholic. A standing room only crowd of over 6,000 came to see two undefeated teams square off in the first conference game of the season. With the exception of the opening kickoff, an explosive Titan offense was held to just six yards and no first downs in the first quarter. An aggressive Titan defense, on the other hand, would also stop the Viking offense from mounting any type of drive in the first quarter. Down by seven points early in the second quarter, the Titan offense got the spark it needed when Chris Siegel connected with Belakovich for a 21-yard gain. Lamar then rambled to the Central Catholic 21-yard line. On second and 11, Dan Trotman would turn a tight end dump pass into a big gain. Tom Farrington would then cap off this 10 play, 80 yard drive with a one yard plunge into the end zone to tie the game. The biggest defensive play of the first half came from Scheller's special team when Tom Farrington raced in from the outside and blocked a punt. We've been practicing all week. There was a gap where we could hit. So I came off of totally untouched, and I just blocked it, and I think uh, Pat Flair recovered it. Three plays later, Siegel found Randy Belakovich on a screen pass to the right. Behind some great blocking, Randy then went six yards for the go-ahead score. On Schiller's first possession in the third quarter, Brandon Lamar, who would rush for 155 yards against the Vikings, burst through the line, breaking three tackles, and then would race 73 yards for Scheller's third score of the game. Down by 14 points, the Vikings tried to generate a passing game, but a swarming, sticking, Titan defense applied the pressure on the central quarterback, coming up with big losses and turnovers. The Titans got three more scores in the fourth quarter, to take a commanding 35-point lead and victory over the Vikings. A combination of a Titan victory and a North Allegheny loss to Newcastle moved Scheller up in the Whippeo polls to the number one spot as they traveled to Butler for week four. Being number one in the Quad A brought mixed emotions for the Titans. We didn't earn it. We just got kind of handed to us. So we really didn't feel like number one. I thought it came too early. I mean, yeah, it was an honor to be number one. I was happy we were number one, but I really wish it would have came later in the season when we really earned it. I thought it was nice, but we didn't earn it. We didn't like have a chance to like prove ourselves yet. So it was nice, but it should have came too early. On Shaler's first possession, the offense was unstoppable, but it took an alert Titan special team to come up with Shaler's first score of the game when JT Hood recovered a Butler miss snap in the end zone. An attacking, swarming Titan defense stopped Butler from mounting any type of offensive drive during the first quarter. Early in the second quarter, Scheller's second score of the game was set up by a 47-yard punt return by Randy Velakovich. Seven plays later, Chris Siegel went three yards on a quarterback sneak to put Scheller up by 14. With under seven minutes remaining in the first half, Scheller's defensive unit would come up with its second critical turnover when Chuck Illick recovered a Butler fumble, giving the Titans great field position at the Tornado's 24-yard line. 
Schiller quickly converted this turnover into a score when Dan Trotman pulled in a pass for a 13-yard touchdown. During the second half, the Titan scoring machine continued to roll over Butler. Siegel, gonna set up the screen to Lehmeyer. Lehmeyer with the catch. Lehmeyer avoids a tackle there. Lehmeyer across the 30 yard lane. He's got running room and Lehmeyer is gone. Forget about it, folks. Brandon Lehmeyer has scored the Shaler touchdown. 42 yards from Chris Siegel and the Titans score quickly again. Lehmeyer does it early in the second half. Throughout the second half, outstanding defensive plays by the Titans would keep Butler's offense bottled up and scoreless. On second down and 11, Titans look to be blitzing here. They send the Sabatino pass on the butt. It is picked off. It is picked off on the far side by number 22, Vinny Ulrich. The Titans quickly turned this interception into points as they drove 63 yards in 11 plays for the final score of the night when Tom Farrington rambled into the end zone, giving Scheller a 29-point lead that the Tornadoes could not overcome. After four impressive victories, the number one Titans, who were also ranked fifth in the state, came home to face their toughest opponent of the season, the three and one North Allegheny Tigers. The mood in the Titan locker room before this pivotal matchup was one of confidence. I really sensed that, that our, our team was very focused and very businesslike about this game, and I, I, I believe very, very confident uh, about uh, uh, you know, how the game would turn out. Uh, we, f we have them down uh, very well, uh, playing them over the years. We feel we have a, a good feel for what they do, and uh, I think that particularly uh, th this group was very, very confident uh, going into the game. And you know, everyone was trying to stay focused, but you get so excited when you play an A, and you, you just, you sometimes lose it. Practice was real intense. It was probably the hardest week of practice we had all year. The locker room going into the NA game was very focused. There was, uh, everyone knew they had a job to complete, and everyone was looking forward to see how well they'd do against NA, because NA is sort of like the or to see how, how well we'll do this season. It was more than a decade since Scheller defeated the Tigers, and the way it looked in the first quarter, NA's winning streak was in danger. On Scheller's second possession of the game, Randy Velakovic took an NA punt 65 yards for a stunning touchdown run to put Scheller up 7 to nothing. After exchanging turnovers, the Titans had a first and 10 at the Tigers' 35-yard line, with under four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Scheller took advantage of this field position and moved the ball to the 17-yard line. On fourth and eight, Chris Kendravy was called on to boot a 33-yard field goal, extending Scheller's lead to 10. In spite of an aggressive Scheller defense, the Tigers took a four-point lead into the second quarter. But this lead wouldn't last long as the Titans started their own scoring drive from their own 28-yard line. Four wide receivers in. Velakovic comes in motion. Pass to the form trips right. Siegel rolling to his right. Gets a block from Farrington. Throws it. Oh. Nice catch. Great throw by Siegel to Broderick. Complete, and it is a Shaler first down. Form trips left. And they quickly give the to Lehmeyer up the middle. Lehmeyer broke a couple tackles to the line of scrimmage. Oh my God! Can you believe this? Brandon Lehmeyer down the left sideline. Lehmeyer inside the 15 to the to the 11 yard line. Heights. Siegel to throw to the end zone. Touchdown, Shaler. JT Hood, eight yards to cut across the middle. Tight to bring in the lead. The Titans had an opportunity to take a commanding lead over the Tigers as the third quarter started, when Brandon Lehmeyer exploded for a 61-yard gain. But a costly turnover would give North Allegheny the ball back at their own five-yard line. Within two minutes and 50 seconds, the Tigers scored two quick touchdowns to take an 11-point lead. In spite of some great defensive stops by the Titan defense, especially on a fourth and one at the Scheller five-yard line, the Titan offense couldn't get back on track, and Scheller would suffer their first loss of the season. The Titans had no time to dwell on the disappointing loss to North Allegheny, 
as they got ready to face the 3-0 conference leader, Newcastle, for a Saturday homecoming game. Both players and coaches knew the importance of this game. The Newcastle game, without a doubt, was the, was the turning point of our season. Uh, although going into it, I believe we were 4-1 we were record-wise and still you know, very much uh, you know, part of the playoff hunt and the, the conference championship race. Uh, I really believe if we didn't rebound after the North Allegheny game uh, with a win against Newcastle, we probably would not be sitting uh, where we are right now. We knew that this was our chance to prove how, how good we really were. After, after our loss to NA, the coaches, the coaches were wondering how we would react to our, to our loss to NA and wondering if we would bounce back. And I think the players and the captains and the seniors and everyone kept everyone up and kept, show them like how, how to react to a loss. Yeah, everybody knew. Like, I mean, that was the most important like, game of the season. That was like the turning point of our season. If we lost it, we, we were going downhill, but we could still recover. But if we won it, we were, we were on top again. I don't think anybody really thought it was going to be the b uh, close as a game as it was. We really, we, I've never lost in Newcastle, and I think we all thought we could play. We knew we could play, and it was just going to be the fact that we were going to win. On Chandler's first possession, they moved the ball to the Newcastle 28-yard line on a Brandon Lehmeyer run. Randy Velakovich then pulled in a Chris Siegel pass at the Hurricane 11. Two plays later, Siegel plunged into the end zone, giving Chandler an early lead. In spite of an outstanding defensive effort by Chandler, the Hurricanes would tie the game in the first quarter. The Titan offensive machine would quickly respond. Play action by Siegel. Looking, he's under pressure. Has lots of time. He's going to fire it out of the middle of the field. Passing. Oh, complete to oh, somebody. Velakovic is going to the football. Velakovic was a great over-the-shoulder reception, and that was all made possible by that incredible blocking by the Shaler offensive line. Play action. Siegel with time. Siegel looking to throw. He's got nowhere to go. Fires back across the middle. He's got hook there. Oh. Shaler's defense continued to smother the Hurricane offense during the first half, producing fumble recoveries and interceptions to stop Newcastle drives. The biggest defensive play of the game that would actually help determine the final score came when Shaler's special team blocked the Newcastle extra point. The Titan defense picked up where it left off in the first half, stopping the Hurricanes on big third down plays while forcing turnovers with an aggressive punishing defense. Shaler increased their lead to 15 late in the third quarter when Tom Farrington darted into the end zone. With under three minutes remaining in the game, Newcastle reeled off two touchdowns to pull within one point of the Titans. But thanks to the left upright, the Titans would keep the lead. And he's missed an extra point already tonight. Snap is down. Kick. Oh, yes. Yes. He missed the extra yes. point. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. With one minute and 24 seconds left, Romano hit the left upright. As the kicker from North Newcastle kicked the ball, we just all turned around and watched it. It hit the upright and we were just shocked and we all ran up the field in joy and hugged our teammates. As soon as it hit, I just looked over and all our fans, our fans, they were just jumping up and down. And it felt like my heart just exploded, you know. I fell on my knees and I was just sitting there like, did we, did we just do that? Oh man, it was great, great feeling. The homecoming crowd held their breath as Newcastle recovered their second onside kick but the Titan defense would rise to the challenge and would shut down the Hurricanes to secure a win and put Scheller back in the Quad A North race. After the heart-stopping victory over Newcastle, the Titans found themselves in a five-way tie for the lead in the Quad North when they traveled to Martorelli Stadium to face the 5-1 North Hills Indians. The Indians, like the Titans, were one of five teams battling for the top spot. With playoff implications on the line, 
the Titan players were ready for the challenge. Uh, North Hills is a big rival of ours. Uh, we always just like to go and beat them. So, yeah, we we wanted we had a win, get the uh, get out of that five one jam. Going to North Hills, I, de <clears throat> I definitely feel everyone was up for the challenge. Uh, we had two tough games before that with NA and Newcastle, so it was, that was the middle part of our uh, schedule. It was really tough. But um, there was five teams tied for first place, and two of them were going to lose. So uh, we knew that we had to get that game, so we'd be in the top three and still be in the hunt. The Titans would dominate the North Hills Indians in the first half of action. On Scheller's first possession, a stunned Indian crowd watched Brandon Lamar race 64 yards for a touchdown. On Scheller's next possession, Randy Velakovich moved the Titans to the North Hills 19-yard line. Chris Kendravy was then called on to boot a 33-yard field goal, extending Scheller's lead to 10. While the offense was racking up the points, Scheller's defensive unit was assaulting a potent North Hills offense, limiting the Indians to just 50 yards of offense in the first half. They're gonna go with the sweep, it's a toss pass. Going, looking to throw, fires down, incomplete. Intercept. It's intercepted, picked off by Tom Barrington, and look at the room he's got running to the right side. Barrington 15 across to the 20. Barrington is gonna go out of bounds. Scheller took advantage of this turnover and marched 59 yards and eight plays to the Indians' three-yard line. Lamar then punched it in for his second touchdown of the night. Dominating defensive play gave the Titans the ball back with only five minutes remaining in the first half. Like a surgeon, Chris Siegel cut through the North Hills defense. As Siegel quickly draws the ball back, looks, throws, complete JT Hood on the... On the under pattern. A little bit of variety for Siegel today, hitting four different receivers already. He Pass this one complete to Milakovic, head over heels tackle. This 11-play, 68-yard drive ended with a 10-yard touchdown pass to Dan Trotman, giving Scheller a commanding 24-point lead at halftime. In the second half, there was a reversal of fortune for both teams. The unstoppable Scheller offense that produced 24 points and 248 yards had difficulty moving in the third and fourth quarter, whereas the North Hills offense woke up in the second half and narrowed Scheller's lead to 12. Crucial defensive plays by Scheller cooled the Indians' momentum and stopped the North Hills' final drive with a minute and 21 seconds remaining to keep Scheller in the title race. The 1998 Titan offense was explosive, generating over 3,000 yards of offense while racking up 305 points to become one of the best scoring threats in the Quad A. After seven weeks of action, the 6-1 Titans regained the top spot in the Quad North, thanks to a Butler win over North Allegheny. Scheller also moved up to the number two spot in the Whippeal Coaches Poll. In control of their own destiny, the Titans traveled to Fox Chapel. A heavy favorite to beat the 0-7 Foxes, the Titans still weren't taking this game lightly. And uh, Going into that game, Fox Chapel was 0-7, uh, although had played everybody very, very tough. and. Uh, 
and quite honestly had given a, given a lot of teams uh, problems. Uh, we recall every one of the games they've had three and four, you know, big offensive plays, long runs, long passes, and just the type of team that if you took them lightly, if you didn't show up and play, uh, they could they could really ruin a season. Uh, we knew we couldn't take them easy. We have to play every game one by one, every team tough. Um, we just, this is the Quad North, toughest conference around. We know every team we play is going to be good. So we prepared to them like we did any other team. Uh, we knew if we didn't practice hard that week, uh, they'd beat us because they, the, they had a very good team. Uh, they probably were the best 07 team ever we ever came against. And we knew if we didn't practice hard that we would have had trouble. On Chandler's first possession, it looked like the Titans would be in control of their playoff destiny as Chris Sigel tossed a 19-yard pass to Randy Milakovic. When the Foxes got the ball, they drove deep into Chandler territory, but heads-up defensive play would give the Titans the ball back at their own five-yard line. Chandler then marched the length of the field, using a combination of passing and running to get to the Fox Chapel 30-yard line. This set up Scheller's next score. I think I gotta get out the screen, the landmarks work so well in those short yard situations and it ends up being big yards. Gotta I look for here, Randy Velock, which we haven't seen the ball go to him yet tonight. Or the tight end dump to Trotman, perhaps. Actually, they're gonna throw deep to Broderick, right side Broderick with the catch and into the end zone for the Shaler touchdown. Right over the shoulder catch by Tim Broderick and now give the Titans a 13-0 lead. Tenacious defensive play by Scheller would keep the Foxes off the scoreboard. This same defensive squad would also come up with key turnovers to stop Fox Chapel drives. Third return, Weber to throw, looks, fires, it is intercepted, intercepted by Dan Trotman at the 39-yard line, and the Titans get another turnover. Here's the toss play, they're gonna pass. Back to throw, he's hit, ball comes free, and the Titans are gonna have it back. Great job by the Titans, Jesse Gazika coming up huge here, the defense really coming on strong. With only 11 seconds remaining in the first half, Chris Kendravy increased the Titans' lead to 16 with his 23-yard field goal. A stubborn Fox Chapel team reduced Scheller's lead to five points early in the second half, but a lethal Titan offensive scoring machine began to roll with under six minutes left in the third quarter. Left third quarter, Hood goes in motion, he'll form trips left on the four wide receiver set. They're gonna throw the fade, oh, Broderick, right side, Broderick, and the end zone for the Shaler touchdown! 26 yards from Chris Siegel, and the Titans run the fade route again. And boy, Fox Temple's gonna be seeing that in their dreams. An inspired Shaler defense would not give the Foxes any room to generate any type of offensive threat. The Titans' biggest break of the game came on a Fox Chapel punt. Titans are in the punt safe. Snap is over his head. He's gonna try to get this one away. He's not gonna do it. He's going down in Shaler territory, in Fox Chapel territory at the 36 yard, 37 yard line. The Titans quickly turned this mistake into points as Chris Siegel, who had passed for over 317 yards against the Foxes, would throw his fourth touchdown pass of the game to Tom Farrington. Brandon Lamar would finish the Titans scoring late in the fourth quarter, sealing a Titan victory and clinching for only the second time in school history a playoff spot. It was senior night at Shaler as the playoff-bound Titans faced the 5-3 Seneca Valley Raiders. This was an emotional night for the Titan players. Uh, walking, down a, walking down a track with my parents, my dad was, my dad was telling me, uh, this, is, this is a great thing, but you gotta be concentrating on the game. You can't be letting this distract you. And I mean, my mom was making a better thing than it was, but they, it, it, was, a, it was a great night. It was, it's something to be proud of that they did such a good job with senior night, and they make you proud to play football for Shayla. I mean, it's, I hate to see the season end, I remember first day of triples my sophomore year, my dad dropped me off and said, enjoy it because it goes quick, and it does. It flies by. It was a must-win situation for both teams. The Raiders needed a win to keep the playoff hopes alive. The Titans needed a win to capture sole possession of the Quad North Conference. On the opening kickoff, 
It looked as if the Titans were on their way to clinching the title when Lamar moved the ball out to the 32-yard line. Scheller then quickly moved to the Raider 48. Eight plays later, Sigel would connect with Troutman on a tight end screen for Scheller's first score. The Titan defense played its best game of the season, coming up with critical stops and timely turnovers. One of the biggest turnovers of the game occurred early in the second half with the Titans leading by four. They've definitely stepped up this season and done a good job. Yeah, this question's quickly erased as Broderick's punt. Kick to Yarnell. Yarnell fumbled the football. Ball is loose and the Titans get it back. The Titans have it back as Tom Harrington fell on the football after Yarnell muffed the punt at the 30 yard line. The Titans quickly took advantage of this field position and moved to the Raider 10 yard line on an unbelievable catch by Tim Broderick. Farrington then plunged into the end zone, increasing Scheller's lead to 11. With under three minutes to play in the first half, the Titan offense started another drive from their 20-yard line. Well, the Titans now three minutes and 11 seconds to drive 80 yards. Siegel to throw. Siegel is gonna run with this one. Siegel's got all sorts of daylight. Siegel cuts back, it's across the 30, and Chris Siegel's gonna have a Shaler first down. Runner in the backfield. They okay. give the Farrington who bounces off a tackle. And Farrington's got daylight! Farrington in the second territory! 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5! He is gone! Touchdown, Shaler Titans! Great play by Farrington. Again, he's getting second touchdown of the night. That's good made on the season. And Farrington might have busted the biggest play of the year. The Titans put the finishing touches on a perfect first half when Chris Siegel, who had passed for over 211 yards on the night, ducked to the defender and lofted a pass to Tim Broderick for a 29-yard score, giving Scheller a 25-point lead. The second half turned into a defensive battle for both teams. The Titan offense moved the ball but couldn't score. Scheller's defense picked up where it left off in the second half, stopping the Raiders from mounting any type of offensive momentum. Scheller's defense limited the Raiders to just 147 total offensive yards on the night. This great defensive effort helped secure the Titans' first conference championship in Scheller area's 28-year history. Defense wins championships, and that can be said about this year's defensive squad for the Titans. Winning the Quad North Conference had a significant meaning to Titan players and coaches. Well, it felt great. That was our goal the whole season long, to be the Quad North champions. We did it. Uh, I think we, need, we celebrated on it, and it was a good thing, but I think we, needed, we knew we needed to work hard right after that to become even more than that. There was a large weight lifted off of our chest because all season we've been striving for one goal, and when you, when you complete your goal, it's just a great feeling. The, the, the players and, and the coaching staff had the resolve this year to see the thing through all the way. And uh, to win the conference championship uh, uh, after the school's 30-year history had, had never uh, won a football championship, I think, was, uh, was a very special thing. As the pairings were announced by the WPIAL, the Titans were one of the top three seeded teams for the Quad A playoffs. And Shaler finally will host Ringgold again Friday night, 7.30. A capacity crowd came to see the 8-1 Titans become a part of Shaler's sports history. 
with the first ever playoff game against the five and four Ringgold Rams. On Shaler's first possession, Chris Siegel connected with Hood. And then with Troutman to move inside the Ringgold 20 yard line. Tom Farrington capped off this impressive 76 yard drive with a three yard run into the end zone, giving Scheller an early lead. The Titans played championship style defense in the first half, causing three Ram turnovers, of which the last one, Scheller converted into three points on a 21 yard field goal by Chris Candrady. After a great defensive stand early in the second quarter, the Titan offense started their second scoring drive. Second and nine, Titans with trips to the left. Ringgold showing blitz. They will come with six men. The exchange in the back, but was mopped, but Farrington's got some room. Farrington has blocks down the sideline. Tom Farrington cuts back, and Farrington still on his feet. What a great play! And Tom Farrington, no, they're gonna call it back. They're gonna say Farrington stepped out of bounds at the 30 yard line. Hard line. Siegel gonna throw the fade. There's Broderick. Can he out jump him? Broderick has it for the Shaler touchdown. Tim Broderick from 11 yards out. The Shaler Titans are up for a two score lead. In the third and fourth quarters, Shaler's defense was relentless, stopping the Rams every time they attempted to generate any offense. The Titan defense also continued to produce turnovers. In fact, a total of six takeaways against Ringo while holding the Rams to just six points. Just as in the first half, the Titans were able to convert Ringgold's mistakes into points, extending their lead over the Rams by 18. The Titans sealed their first playoff victory in school history with the Broderick Siegel connection. Siegel back to throw. Siegel has Broderick wide open for the catch. Tim Broderick down the right sideline. Stutter steps and he's gone! Shaler Titan touchdown, Tim Broderick! 60 yards to Broderick, the Titans have put this one in the books. The Quad A corner finals was the next step for the Titans. Their opponent was the seven and three Penn Hills Indians. This was the first time that a Titan team had ever gone this far in postseason play. As the excitement was building, Scheller coaches were confident the players would remain focused. Well, you know, we always talk about uh, we're a family. There's uh, about 70 players and, you know, uh, our coaching staff. We, we stay as a, as a unit. We stay as a family. We concentrate on ourselves. We try to kind of just uh, let the people talk. You know, we, we appreciate the, any compliments that we get, but we really stay focused on, uh, on our job. We're kind of... Uh, you know, uh, lunch pal type guys. We just go to work every day and we just want to um, do the best we can and, and get as prepared as we possibly can and go out and, and, and just uh, beat the other team. The Titans felt they were ready to face the challenge of playing Penn Hills. Yeah, I think we were ready for the challenge. Um, we had to stop the run. Just, uh, we had to stop the run to win that game. Uh, we had a great week of practice. Everyone was really ready to play. And we were prepared. We had a couple of tricks up our sleeves. And it was just a fun week. A lot of uh, the school was all everyone was, you know, fired up for the game. Um, so we were extremely concerned about the, the things that they could, uh, could do and, and more than anything, just the, uh, the, ath the athletes that they had and, and uh, the success that they have had over time and the experience maybe that they had had in those playoff type situations that, that we had not had. It was Friday the 13th as the Titans took the field at West Mifflin Stadium to square off against the Penn Hills Indians. As the first half played out, the only luck the Titans experienced was bad luck. For 24 minutes, an explosive Schiller offense that averaged 30 points and 300 yards per game of offense was held just at three first downs and 10 yards rushing by Penn Hills. Schiller's defense fared no better in the first half, allowing Penn Hills to jump out to a 19-point lead. Some real soul-searching had to be done during the halftime. Uh, and I don't know if it was so much adjustment uh, that was made as just getting the, the, the players to realize that, you know, we're better than what we're showing out there. Uh, I can remember uh, Coach Dudley and Coach Bud uh, over in the defensive side of the locker room 
uh, throwing words around such as, uh, you know, we have to draw a line in the sand. Uh, you know, they had scored 19 points in the first half. Nobody has scored three touchdowns on us in a half all year. And uh, this, was, this was not us. And we, we just had to buckle down and, show, and start playing our type of football. A different Titan team took the field in the second half. On Scheller's first possession, Brandon Lamar picked up a 15-yard gain to the Penn Hills 49-yard line. Chris Siegel then connected with Broderick to the Penn Hills 16 for a 45-yard gain. Two interference calls on Penn Hills then set up Scheller's first score of the night. So, Gaston comes split far to the right. Farrington, the line back for the Titans. And oh! Leaps over to the end zone for the touchdown. Scheller touchdown. Chris Siegel from a yard out. The Titans now trying to get back in this ball game. A proud Scheller defense dug in during the third and fourth quarter, stopping the Penn Hills running attack and limiting the Indians to just 66 yards rushing in the second half. Scheller's offense struggled for the remainder of the game, coming up with some big plays, but no points. As the final seconds ticked away on the game clock, so did Scheller's hopes of winning a WPIAL title. I think it was a great season. I wouldn't change anything that happened in this season for the world. Uh, I love all these guys on this football team, and I'd do anything for them. And um, good luck to the guys who get to play next year because uh, they have a lot of shoes to fill on this team and they have a, they have a good Titan reputation to uphold. We had a great year. Uh, I would have liked to go a little further in the playoffs, but things happened and the season was over and great. It was definitely a successful season. We won our first championship and our first playoff game. So we set the standard pretty high for the younger kids. They have to uh, really step it up if they want to surpass what we just did. Say overall, we accomplished our goal. We would have liked to have kept going and maybe get the three-over stadium, but we didn't. I felt that this year was a year that I just had a feeling all year that things were going to happen for us, and they did. And it def I can't say I'm disappointed. I think we had a good year. But yeah, I would have liked to have gone farther. Um, the, these kids have put in extreme amounts of work, uh, from going down to University of Maryland, to the passing camp, to, to being here in the weight room three days a week, all year long. And uh, the, the price that has been paid over the years uh, finally paid off and you know we've been very proud of, of previous teams and we've been ranked in the top 10 you know many times now and we've been in the playoffs but not any of our previous teams had achieved the goal as this team did and uh, you know for that uh, you know I will always hold this group and and uh, the fondest of memories, and um, I think, as I said before, uh, the fact that these guys worked hard and they achieved will probably be the thing that uh, I will remember forever. The 1998 season will be forever a part of Shaler football history. Both coaches and players can be proud that their dedication and hard work took Titan football to the championship level. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the rest, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable. But in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life So take the photographs and still frames in your mind 
Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time. Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial. For what it's worth, it was worth all the while. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. But in the end, that's right. I hope you had the time of your life. It's something unpredictable. But in the end, that's right. I hope you had the time of your life. Three up men, Tom Farrington, Randy Velakovic, and Brandon Lehmeyer will be the three deep men. The kicker, again, is Ivano Parada. Titans lead 14-13 as we get ready to start the second half of action. Homecoming 1998, it has been a spectacular day. You saw the halftime festivities. Kickoff taken by Velakovic, and here we go. The Rosebud return for the Titans as coming out with a football is Brandon Lehmeyer! Oh, oh my God, he's Look gone! Look at the daylight! Lehmeyer is gonna be gone! 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Taylor Titans! Walker well, really makes a great time to use that play. We've seen it a couple of times in the last few years. And Lehmeyer really capitalizes, busts open, and he's got a lot of talent. Speaking of receive right there, talking about Lehmeyer has a bust out run.